All right, so we're down in the Sucte Constitucion. I was upstairs uh, outside the train station trying to film, but uh, uh, there was a dude with a leaf blower, and it was really loud. Uh, so I came down here to try and get away from that, and it turns out we're in the middle of rush hour, and this place is absolutely packed. There's like a million, billion people here trying to get on the train. Anyway, we're gonna hop on the train. Today we are going up to Retiro train station, and we're gonna take a train from there to Barrio Chino, Chinatown. Uh, because, uh, well, we want to explore it and we also want to try and get some good Chinese food. And to do that, you gotta go to the source. There, there's a ton of people around here. That train over there is completely, completely full. So, anyway, we'll get off the camera here and uh, hop on this next train. We'll get up to uh, uh, Barrio or uh, Retiro and then maybe we'll talk a little bit more about why we're doing this because uh, there's a lot more to talk about than just the delicious Chinese food that we're going to try and get. Okay, so we got off the train at uh, Independencia because that train was absolutely packed. It was horrible. Uh, that's like the busiest train line and it's rush hour, morning rush hour. Uh, but uh, we're trying to go to Retiro and we can actually take the line E uh, and we can transfer the line E here. Line E uh, doesn't have as many riders, so I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that the train won't be as busy and maybe we can like, or, or we're just going to get on the exactly same situation where we just uh, transfer for no reason, but we'll see. We'll, see. we'll get down there and we'll see if, uh, if we made a good choice or not. Okay, so. Getting off that train and switching over to the E line uh, was a very good idea. Big brain, 200 IQ. Uh, the E line had very few people on it, and uh, after they got to the Boulevard stop, where the D and the A lines uh, transfer, like half the people got off. I even was able to get a seat. They were blasting the air conditioning on the train because it is like real hot and humid today. I'm sweating my huevos off. Um, and uh, no matter what, I think wherever we go today, I'm going to be sweating my huevos off. So uh, I got a bottle of water right here. Got to make sure stay hydrated. That's going to be rule number one. Rule number one, no. Rule number one is don't get arrested. Rule number two, stay hydrated. And uh, after I got off um, the, the stop, instead of going directly to the train station, I decided to uh, take a little walk around the neighborhood, walked up this hill. And uh, we ended up in uh, a familiar place that I've been to before. Um, right next to Florida Street, it is uh, this is uh, Plaza de. Para qué? Uh, es un cámara. Ah. Sí, sí. ¿Y para qué era? Uh, lo siento, no no hablo muy mucho español. Ah. Sí. Más fuerte. ¿Vos en tranquilo? Uh, ¿Lo siento? Soy extranjero. Uh, no entiendo. ¿Soy de otro país? Ah, oh, sí, sí, soy de Estados oh. Unidos. Sí. Una cosa, ¿qué tiene para ciudad? Uh, ¿Lo siento? Plata. Plata, ah, oh, sí, sí, sí. Uh, un momento. Aquí tienes. Sí, más bueno. Didn't quite understand what that guy was saying at first, but then he asked for plata, which means silver. So he was asking for money. So I gave him a little bit of money. Uh, anyway, so uh, we are, like I said, in Plaza uh, Plaza de Jose, General Jose de San Martin, and uh, it's nice. It's a nice place. We're gonna just chill here for a second, cool off a little bit, drink our water, and then. Uh, we're going to head to the actual train station to go to uh, Barrio Chino. Why are we going to Barrio Chino other than uh, to explore it and uh, to, uh, to get Chinese food? Well, uh, we want to talk a little bit about the relationship between Argentina and China. And there's actually a long history of a uh, relationship between Argentina and China. And there is a pretty sizable uh, population of people of Chinese descent in Buenos Aires. Uh, and recently, in the last few presidential administrations, uh, the Argentine government and the Chinese government have become a lot closer. The train that we were riding on to get here into Plaza Constitucion and also the sub subway train that we were riding on are made in China, Chinese-made uh, train carriages. 
and China has invested a lot in uh, projects to help like improve and expand uh, the uh, the Argentine trade system. Uh, China also has a currency swap with Argentina, which basically really benefits the Argentines because it allows them to uh, to get access to foreign currency, which they desperately, desperately need. Uh, so they can get access to the uh, Chinese Yuan. And um, and it benefits China because they're just trying to spread uh, geopolitical influence. And they do that through investing in transportation infrastructure. They do that through currency swaps, spreading uh, foreign currency so that other countries have uh, reserves of their currency uh, in their central banks. Uh, there's also uh, talk a few months back of uh, Argentina trying to expand uh, their air force and buy some fighter jets. And the fighter jets they were trying to buy, at least as of uh, about eight or nine months ago, were Chinese JF-17 fighter jets. And the reason was because uh, ever since the uh, Falklands-Malvinas conflict, the British have an arms embargo sales to Argentina and that's not like it's not like the British are gonna sell fighter jets to uh, Argentina but they make a lot of parts that are in a lot of countries fighter jets that they produce and so they will block countries uh, selling their fighter jets to Argentina if they have British parts in them so uh, their, um, their selection was pretty limited in Argentina for like the types of, uh, types of uh, fighter jets they were going to be able to buy. It basically came down to China, uh, Russia, or certain uh, like United States fighter jets. More recently, the United States is trying to sell Argentina some uh, older Danish uh, F-16 fighter jets. And also more recently, the uh, disastrous uh, performance of the Russian military in the conflict in Ukraine has made it so that nobody really wants to buy Russian-made um, military equipment anymore, and you can see why. Um, so it was the Chinese. They were going to buy from the Chinese. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, the new president-elect, Javier Millet, has uh, said in statements that he uh, does not want to deal with China. He is ideologically opposed to China. Uh, Millet is a far-right, anarcho-capitalist, libertarian, and uh, China is run is an authoritarian communist state. So they're about as far apart on the political spectrum and economic spectrum as you can possibly get. Uh, so Millet has said also that he wants to dollarize the economy, and that would mean uh, that that would pretty much end the currency swap between uh, China and uh, Argentina because uh, the United States, that's where the dollars are, and the United States and China are uh, geopolitical rivals. Uh, but, you know, the, they can't fully cut off the relationship because um, China is, uh, like, uh, they export a lot of manufactured goods to Argentina. And Argentina exports a lot of agricultural products and natural resources and things like that to China. So there will still be a relationship there. Just not sure exactly how close uh, it will be uh, diplomatically, right? Economically, it's still going to be there. I mean, right now, the United States and China have not great diplomatic relations, but we're, you know, the United States and China are still each other's largest trading partners. So uh, money talks, bullshit walks, and um, I guess. We're not going to know until Millet actually takes power and we see how he's going to deal with the Chinese. But it's not looking good right now for the relationship between, uh, between Argentina and China. Uh, so we're going to head to the train station in Retiro. We'll catch the train out to Barrio Chido when we get there. Maybe we can talk a little more about like the history of uh, the relationship between Argentina and China and why there are actually uh, a sizable population of people of Chinese descent here in Buenos Aires. All right, we'll see you when we get there. All right, so Retiro train station. We are here. It's the first time actually in Retiro train station. It's really beautiful, uh, as of course is Constitución. Same kind of architecture, very old, very, uh, very like uh, Gilded Age kind of looking. Very cool. Uh, just found out from a nice lady over there which train we need to take, and it gets here in about 
I don't know, 20 minutes or so. So we got a little bit of time. We can walk around, take a look around the station, maybe grab another bottle of water because, like I said, it's very humid, sweating balls. Um, and, uh, <laughs> of course, there it is. Starbucks. Can't get away from Starbucks. But uh, I don't want to go to Starbucks. Who wants to go to Starbucks? Not me. Not this guy. Uh, so one thing I forgot to mention uh, also about the relationship between Argentina and China is uh, under the previous administration, uh, an interesting thing happened down in Santa Cruz, which is a province uh, in the like, southwest part of the country over by San Carlos de Bariloche, where people go and ski in the mountains and whatnot. Anyway, there's some desert area over there. And out in the middle of the desert, an interesting thing popped up. It is a uh, satellite monitoring station. And uh, it's a Chinese satellite monitoring station. And the, uh, the thing about it is the Chinese have said that it is 100% for peaceful space exploration. Uh, but it is at a secure location. Uh, it is run by the Chinese military, and the Argentine government has absolutely no oversight over it. I think in the agreement on the lease of the land, they actually wrote something in about how it can't be used for non-civilian purposes, but they don't enforce it at all whatsoever. They have no enforcement mechanism for that. So basically, uh, who knows? Who knows what the Chinese are doing down there? They said that uh, they, um, you know, it's completely peaceful and it's for space exploration, but, um, you know, take it with a massive grain of salt, uh, because like I said, it is uh, operated, it is a secure site uh, operated by the Chinese military. So that'll also tell you how uh, close of a relationship Argentina and China had um, in the previous administrations. So uh, I think we're gonna try and find another bottle of water or something around here and then we'll hop on the train and when we get actually out to Barrio Chino we'll talk a little more. Alright so we get off the train at the uh, Belgrano C stop which is right next to Barrio Chino and uh, I can tell that, uh, that we're close to Barrio Chino because there's a sign over here that says Paseo Beijing. Paseo Beijing. So we're gonna head over. It's just like a couple blocks from here. And while we're walking over there, we can talk about the history of uh, Chinese immigration to uh, to Argentina. So there's something like 200,000, more than 200,000 uh, people of Chinese descent in Argentina. It's like less than half a percent, but it's still a sizable amount of people. And uh, they came really in like three waves of immigration. The first wave, beginning of the 20th century, first half of the 20th century. Uh, there was a lot of turmoil in China. I don't know how much you know about Chinese history, but uh, there was a lot of turmoil in China in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, from, you know, like around the early 1900s up and through 1949 when the Chinese Communist Revolution uh, occurred. A lot of, lot of, uh, turmoil, a lot of war. Um, the early period was like a period of warring states where warlords controlled different parts of the country. Uh, then the Japanese invaded in the 1930s. That spilled over into World War II and that eventually ended up with the Chinese Communist Revolution. So it wasn't a great time, uh, to say the least. And um, so there were a lot of people that left and some of those people came here to Argentina. And there was a second wave of uh, immigration, and that was uh, Taiwanese immigrants in the 1980s. Now, uh, there is a uh, definitely um, a question as to whether Taiwan is part of China or not. And depending on who you ask, you're going to get a different answer. And that is something that we could make an entire channel about and make hundreds of videos about. And we're not going to do that because that's not what this video is about. But suffice to say, uh, it's a sticky issue. and. Uh, we will talk about Taiwanese immigration uh, in the general uh, greater uh, subject of Chinese immigration because honestly here in Argentina um, I, I kind of get the feeling that like 
they're not going to make the distinction between whether you're from Taiwan or you're from China. You're going to be Chino, which means Chinese, and uh, that's going to be the end of it. So anyway, like during the 80s, uh, late 70s and the 80s, uh, there was an economic downturn in Taiwan. A lot of people uh, left to other places, and one of those places was here in Argentina. And a lot of those people uh, in Taiwan ended up buying uh, supermarkets here in um, in China. Or I mean, I'm sorry, in, in China, in Argentina. I'm like in Chinatown right here. Here, take a look. Can tell where we are now. We are we are in Barrio Chino for sure. And uh, do a little walk and talk. I'll keep the camera facing out so you don't have to look at my stupid face. You can like look at this beautiful uh, pedestrian street here with. Lots of Chinese shops and restaurants, very cool, while we talk about uh, more about the history. So anyway, uh, so yeah, the wave of immigration in the 80s, mostly from Taiwan. And uh, then there was another wave in the 90s, and that was people from Fujian, or Fujian uh, province in China. And a lot of the people who, uh, the Taiwanese people who, um, who had bought grocery stores, they ended up selling those grocery stores to, uh, to the people who came from China, the Chinese immigrants in the 90s. And Chinese immigrants in the 90s, you know, also bought up grocery stores on their own. And that's why, like, in pretty much every neighborhood in Buenos Aires, especially, like, the more, like, uh, working-class neighborhoods, you'll find a Chinese supermarket, like, on every corner. Supermercado Chino. Every neighborhood's gonna have one. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's more or less the history. More recently, there has been another wave, sort of like a fourth wave of Chinese immigration because of the uh, like close relationship between, uh, between the countries in the previous uh, presidential administrations, the relationship between Argentina and China. And a lot of the Chinese immigrants that have come in the sort of fourth wave have been um, like middle class, more educated uh, professionals, I think. Um, quite sure on that. I hope I'm getting that right. But um, this is all just, you know, general terms we're talking about. Every every individual story is going to be different for why they, you know, decided to leave their country and come to another country. Um, but uh, that's more or less the broad view of, like, Chinese immigration to, uh, to Argentina. And uh, like I said, there is a relatively um, large population uh, here in... Um, of, uh, of Chinese people and people of Chinese descent here in, uh, in Argentina. Let's take a quick walk down this uh, little pedestrian street. It's really cool, there's a lot of shops, restaurants, cafes and whatnot along here. It's still kind of early, so a lot of stuff is closed. Uh, so we may have to just like hang out a little bit and wait for this stuff to open. Because we definitely, definitely want to go and find uh, some good, some good food. Uh, we're in the, we're in the right neighborhood for that, I think. Um, but uh, while we're walking, I want to talk a little bit about uh, like discrimination against Chinese people and people of Chinese descent here in Argentina. Now, I've read stories, testimonials. I've heard, you know, people on podcasts and things who are talking about their experience being someone who is uh, either a Chinese immigrant or someone who's a first generation. Uh, you know, Chinese born here, Argentine citizen, but they're of Chinese descent. And they face, you know, a certain amount of discrimination. I don't know that it's like any worse here than it would be anywhere else in a city that's outside of China. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't get the feeling that it is. I don't get the feeling that it's any worse here than, you know, specifically worse here than it would be anywhere else. Um, I mean, let's be honest, there's uh, there's racist assholes everywhere around the world. So uh, I think people are going to experience some discrimination. But, uh, you know, like I said, I don't think it's any worse here than it is. And Argentina, for the most part, um, seems to be very, very welcoming um, to foreigners, you know, uh, for, the, for the most part, like I said, más o menos, right? And uh, one of the things, though, that I have heard is more recently um, with the uh, coronavirus uh, there has been increased um, like a stigma of people of Chinese descent and that sort of happened all over the world unfortunately um, and specifically here with the economic crisis and the inflation one of the things that I didn't really talk about was how taxes work here in Argentina and uh, one of the problems I think especially if you're uh, like a Millet supporter and how you would categorize it is 
the taxes here are kind of like horizontal taxes. Um, the the upper upper class, the upper crust, richest of the rich people in uh, in Argentina, have found a way to avoid uh, paying a good amount of the tax. So a lot of the tax burden falls on uh, the middle class and also on the working class. Does that sound familiar to anyone in the United States? It should. Uh, so what ends up happening is people uh, people in the middle class are being taxed and those taxes are being pay, used to pay for uh, public services, social safety net and things like that. Um, and it's, it's money essentially moving horizontally class-wise, right? So say you're someone who is middle class, you don't use public transportation, but you're being taxed and that money is going to public transportation, which people are using. Or say you send your kids to private school and they're not going into the public education system. So uh, like, like I said, this should all sound very familiar to you if you're from the United States. And, um, and honestly, like, uh, it's, it's, I would say, worse here uh, in Argentina, specifically because the taxes are higher here. So you're getting taxed uh, at a higher rate and uh, a lot of people, I think, feel resent, uh, like resentment towards, um, towards other people who are sort of in their same uh, economic class because of specific circumstances under which they're being taxed and they feel like their tax dollars are, uh, are going to subsidize um, services for, for things that they, don't, that they don't use or that they don't experience. And that can lead to resentment, especially in hard economic times, like what is currently going on in Argentina. And when that kind of resentment happens, there's almost always going to be a uh, racial or ethnic element to it, where certain people can be convinced that uh, it's those people, those other people, who are, you know, um, stealing all my money, my tax dollars, and I shouldn't have to pay for blah, blah, blah for those people. I'm not saying that that is widespread in Argentina, but uh, it's a thing. Uh, it's definitely a thing. And I think that is something that would potentially contribute to, uh, to discrimination against people of Chinese descent here in Argentina. So we found this really nice little street here. Trees, real beautiful, nice and shady. It's a nice neighborhood, I do like it. Walking around, it's buzzing, people are walking around on the streets. There's a lot of stuff going on, even though it's still early. And uh, I think we're just gonna walk around a little bit more and see what we can see uh, until a lot more of those well, restaurants start opening up. And then once, uh, once those open up, hopefully get ourselves some delicious lunch. And if we do that, then we will have accomplished uh, both parts of our mission. Explore the neighborhood and, uh, and get delicious food. And also, we got a chance to talk about uh, the history of Chinese immigration here and the current uh, relationship between uh, the, the governments of China and the government of Argentina. really is a cool neighborhood though. Some like mid-rise apartment buildings over there. Dogs going absolutely insane on that balcony over there. That's a typical thing in Argentina, man. Everywhere I go, it's just like people's dogs are just going nuts. Some very, uh, very excited dogs in Argentina, I've noticed. That's all right. Dog's gonna dog, right? Dog's gonna dog. Anyway, I do like this little bit. It feels nice in the shade. It feels a little cooler up here, I'm not gonna lie. I think it might be because this neighborhood is actually a lot closer to the, uh, to the river. Um, so maybe you get like a, a breeze. It feels breezier up here, which is kind of nice, especially on a, on a day when it's gonna, be, uh, it's gonna be real hot and humid. It's nice to find a nice breezy neighborhood with a nice shady street. There's a lot of shady streets like this in, uh, Argentina. I don't mean shady like sketchy. I mean there are those, but uh, in Buenos Aires I mean shady like there's a lot of big trees on a lot of streets that provide a lot of shade. It's a real tree city. There are tons of trees around, which is super nice. Um, it makes the city feel uh, less of a concrete jungle and more of a jungle jungle, which is kind of cool. 
It's a nice park here. This is a, right across from the train station where we uh, where we got off the train. You see it right over there. And uh, it's a nice park. It really is nice. Come look over there. Check it out. Super nice. Anyway, I can see my face again. My big stupid face. And uh, we're heading back over towards the opening of that pedestrian street over there. We'll go over. I'm going to walk around through there and see. Uh, I'll turn the camera off because you already went through there with me. But I'll go over there and see like, if I can find out what the hours are for some of these restaurants. And we'll try and pick a restaurant that we want to go to because we're really only going to be able to go to one. And we want to pick a good one. So... to uh, re-edit the sound because they were just blasting copyrighted music in there. Uh, so we will cover, I'm sure, all that up with some wonderful uh, royalty-free uh, music. But I just wanted to walk through this. saw the little uh, Chinese supermarket there. And that's like not a supermercado chino like I mentioned before, like you would see in uh, one of the neighborhoods. One of Cyrus. That's like an actual like Chinese supermarket with like Chinese ingredients and all Chinese products and stuff and uh, having visited many a Chinese supermarket in my uh, in my life it smelled exactly the same in there as it did in every other one it just took me right back uh, and like going into the back with the fish market all the seafood on ice <laughs> that uh, that shelf with all the like organ meats and chicken feet and whatnot. Oh man, brings me right back. Brings me right back. Made me feel good walking through there. I didn't actually buy anything. Maybe we'll swing back through before we leave. See if there are some Chinese imported products that we want to get. But like I said, everything that's imported in Argentina is crazy expensive. And just when I walked through there, just looking at a few of the prices on some things, I saw one uh, sign near some, uh, I don't even know, some sort of dry good or something. It was like 43,000 pesos, which is a lot. It's like 43 bucks. So I'm thinking it's going to be relatively expensive, the imported stuff. So maybe we will, maybe we won't. But uh, maybe we will. Okay, so we found a restaurant to go to. It is this place right across the corner here. It's called uh, Royal Mansion. There it is, right there. Oh, wait, let's see. See it? Royal Mansion. And why did we choose Royal Mansion? Well, we chose Royal Mansion because they serve dim sum 
which we want. Uh, and also, uh, because they're like one of the only places around here that are open on Monday. Like, everything seems to be closed on Monday. Uh, especially like dim sum restaurants, which makes sense because Saturday and Sunday, those are the most popular days, and then usually they close on Monday. I forgot about that. Shouldn't have forgot about that. So it's kind of an unfortunate time for us to, uh, to come to uh, Barrio Chino. But uh, at least this place is open. They have pretty good reviews. And uh, we're going to go check it out. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go eat. has a weird cat robot <laughs> delivering food. Look at this thing. <laughs> oh man. That that's just nuts. It goes around and it talks. It speaks Spanish better than me. Alright, so we're all done. A delicious dim sum lunch. It was very good actually. Uh, it's a little bit little bit salty, but but very, very good. Uh, I I know dim sum, and that was pretty good dim sum. So uh, it wasn't extremely cheap. <laughs> it was not like typical Argentina prices. Uh, so it was kind of expensive, but I guess um, food delivering adorable robots don't pay for themselves. Uh, so, anyway, if you're ever in uh, Barrio Chino and you're looking for a nice uh, upscale uh, dim sum restaurant open on a Monday, then uh, check that place out. Royal Mansion. Not bad. Not bad at all. Alright, we're going to walk back to the train station. I think that's going to be it for today. We accomplished our mission. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, tomorrow we're going to go out and film again. And uh, I think the next video, we're going to do a little more serious subject. Uh, there's been a lot of talk in the news about uh, Las Malvinas, the Falkland Islands, because of some statements that were made by the president-elect, Javier Mille, and the current prime minister of the United Kingdom, Rishi Sunak. So that's a real interesting uh, situation, the relationship between the United Kingdom and uh, Argentina. And there's a, there's a history there. There's a long history there. So we'll talk about that. We'll visit some places of historical significance, as we always do. And uh, other than that, I think we're going to call it for today. Good day. Mission accomplished. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time.